Hey everyone, Steve here with Kev and uh, welcome back. We were finishing our uh, deeper dive into the back defenses last time. This time I want to uh, focus on our back offense. So come out to Kev. So again, when I'm on Kev's back and I work with uh, an overhook and underhook, I know that he wants to try to put his back to the ground on the underhook side. So before he's able to get there, I'm going to kind of beat him to the punch by wedging my head in deep and I'm going to initiate my movement to that side but when I go to that side I make sure his head and his back do not touch the ground. So as I go to the side I know that not only does he want to get his head and back uh, to the ground he wants to be able to go, uh, go over my leg. So to stop him from being able to go over my leg I'll work my feet up on his body. To help facilitate that my top leg will go on his hip. I'm going to push down on the hip to make it also a little easier if he tries to bridge into me I can use that downward push to help keep my head up, and then bring that bottom leg across his body. So my, my underhook, my foot on the hip, my bottom leg, all trying to keep my opponent's head above my head so they can't put their back on the ground. And again, from here, we can absolutely go right into trying to attack the neck. But what often happens is the person will start grabbing at your hands and make it difficult. So even though I have good control, I need to now start uh, eliminating his defenses. And if I'm on the side with my underhook, it'll be relatively easy to uh, control the top arm with my leg. So I'll use both of my hands, really, to get some type of control. And I try to push the hand as low as possible. I'll bring my outside foot over the arm. But once it's over, I'll then put the top of my foot into his back. So I hook, bring the top of my foot into his back, and I still pinch, keeping my other leg up. Now, I have two free hands, and he only has one. So I will try to control that hand at first. But now, again, if your partner has a lapel, they have a gi, you can go right in and work just with one arm on the gi. You could, after you get a good deep right grip, let go and go for the other collar, right to grip. Um, but if your partner is not wearing a gi, you can still work just traditional uh, rear strangles or even transition then to uh, attacking the arm. For right now, we're focusing on the neck. So one more time. As I move to my underhook side, I, make it, I really make sure to keep my head forward to avoid letting my partner put their head or back on the ground as I move my feet to the top hip. My goal is to immediately trap that top arm and then collect the bottom arm. If for some reason I couldn't reach it, I would say that's fine. I'm just going to go whoop, right in for the neck. And again, when I'm in here, uh, 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 I might be relatively you know, off angle when I want to work uh, my control. When I go to strangle, you'll notice I do like the rear, rear, rear choke. I have to pull him in and get his head kind of close to my head as I get this hand deep. Like I'll put the fingers behind his neck and put my, my chin basically over my own wrist here. And again, you can do this with one arm just by keeping good control, good control, opening your chest. But we can absolutely also release and then either connect our hands together, palm to palm, or over the back. So, uh, moving off to the side to control the hands will be our, uh, for our neck attack will be our first option and then our second option is going to be uh, working at the arms right attacking the arms so we would still want to control by moving to the underhook side wedging our head in deep and getting our feet to the top hip but now either I feel like I can't control the arm or uh, his hands or I uh, uh, it'd be harder to attack the neck so instead I'm going to go for his arm by again uh, switching so my arm that's over his shoulder will come across and I'm gonna grab his left arm with both of my hands and try to form what we call a Kimura grip, meaning my right hand grabs his left wrist, I overlap, and my goal with this position right now is to keep his elbow off the ground. I do not want Kev putting his elbow on the ground where he can then post and try to rotate over, so I'm kind of lifting his elbow up. And by lifting his, up, his elbow up, it's a little bit hard for him to move, and as I said, my uh, left leg's across his hips, my goal would be to get my right leg over his head, and if I feel fast enough, and can just bring it over, that's absolutely fine. But a lot of times, you know, you'll feel like a person is ready to block and make it difficult. So uh, a couple options, if, if I feel like I can't get it over his head, is one, to go super wide, to try to get underneath that far arm. Meaning I go back, I bring it up, and I'll say, okay, that's fine. I can't get the head right now. I'll just go underneath the armpit and then go back. And then another option is say, okay, I can't hook in front, so I'm gonna take my heel, just my heel, over his shoulder. And I'll use that now to help me slide and I'm basically in that arm trap position where I could twist and come up first and then get my leg over his head. Remember with every arm lock, I want to pinch my knees 
I'm gonna curl my feet in, and I'll transition to a wrist control as I pull his arm back over my inside hip. I slowly bridge my hips up. No one feels any discomfort, he taps. So one more time. Again, as I go to my underhook side, I make sure to get my feet up high across the hip line. I come across, and I'm looking to control his one arm with two of mine. From here, I can absolutely work to try to get my leg over his head, but if he's making it difficult, I can either swing it super wide so I hook underneath the, the armpit, or I could simply go to trap over the shoulder. From this position, I would lift his elbow as I rotate over to come up first, and then work my leg over his head. Knees pinch, leg up, feet curl, controlling the arms to come back nice and slow, bringing it over my inside hip as I bridge. So we're gonna work uh, our last back circuit. We'll be working for, again, about two and a half minutes on our arm trap to the neck attack, and then two and a half minutes for the straight arm lock, and then we're gonna do one round each of positional sparring, uh, five minutes per round. All right, uh, let's get to it.